Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here. We're going to be looking today, a little comparison, we've done a few of these already, of the King James Version of the Bible and the New Christian Standard Bible put out by Holman Publishing. Now, those of you that know me know that I am a King James guy. And, you know, I've come to those conclusions over the course of decades, actually, that it is the preserved text, the, the Textus Receptus in the Byzantine text, basically is the preserved text that God has always used around the world. And this is an eclectic text. And so we're going to see and these, you know, there's main verses people look up, like Matthew 17, 21, Matthew 18, 11, Matthew 23, 14, you know, Acts 8, 37, John 5, 4, on and so forth. But we're going to look at how even some uh, lesser known verses that there's words that are changed, phrases that are removed. And so we're just going to take a look at that today. And so... And they don't always mean the same thing. So we're going to start in Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. Now, I probably, if the Lord ever provided, I need a large print CSB. But right now I'm just using a little paragraph outreach edition. So my eyes, sometimes I can't get everything. Uh, it's sometimes because of the paragraph format and then because of the size of print, I don't always find stuff good. So you have to bear with me for just a few moments as we do that. So in Matthew eleven nineteen, it said uh, at the very last, it says, but wisdom is justified of her children. And that's a very famous passage of the Bible. A lot of people have heard that uh, wisdom is justified of her children. But when you get to eleven nineteen here, it says this, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. So he had just done this, this story about children piping and all this. So then it says, wisdom is justified of her children, saying, go back. This has a relation to where yet wisdom is vindicated by her deed. So you can see that's going to be some um, very serious uh, differences of meaning right there. And so in Matthew 19, 17, where a lot of people say this is talking about Jesus being God, where he says, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one, which is God. Like, hey, I'm God. Let's see how it reads in the CSB. Matthew 19, 17. Matthew 19, 17 CSB. Let's see what it reads. Because it may read the same. It may read the same because this book's not comparing the CSB. It's actually comparing the NIV. It's if the foundations be destroyed by Chick Syllabi. I've done a review on that. So uh, sometimes it's going to, so we're just kind of doing an exploration together and see if it's the same. Okay, why do you ask me about what is good? So you can say, Jesus said, why callest thou me good? And in the CSB, why do you ask me? about what is good. So it takes away any reference to the deity of Jesus Christ. It just says, we're not going to have this talking about the deity of Jesus Christ. Wow. Okay, so John 14, 2. John 14, 2. Quote this a lot at funerals, different things. Again, very kind of a well-known passage in my father's house are many mansions everybody gets a mansion well not if you're in the csb maybe let's see in my father's house are many rooms my many rooms so what we've got is this massive house of god and it's so massive it can fit mansions in it okay New Jerusalem, 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles, maybe bigger than that. In modern versions, including CSB, it's just rooms. Everybody gets their own little room. So in the King James, you know, you get mansions. In the modern versions, you get rooms. And so that's materially different. So let's go to Mark 14, 24, where it says, this is my blood of the New Testament. Let's just read it here. Mark 14, 24 in my Cambridge large print text only. Mark 14, 24. And it says, and he said unto them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. I'm glad for the New Testament. 
All right, so let's see what Mark 14, 24 has to say in the Christian Standard Version. In the Christian Standard Version of the Bible, he said unto them, this is my, uh, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. This is my blood of the covenant. Not the New Testament. You miss that. It's just the covenant. No, this is the New Testament. All right? New covenant. Takes out the word new, which is highly important. It says here, also compare Matthew 26, 28. Okay. Um, Luke 6, 48. Aren't you glad for houses built on the rock? Amen. So let's look up 648 of Luke. Luke 648 says this. But the one who... Uh, 648, yeah. 648. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. When the flood came... The river crashed against it and, uh, and uh, against that house and could not shake it because it was well built. Because it was well built. 648 in the King James says the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock. So one's well built. No, it's founded upon the rock, Jesus Christ, the revelation. He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's God in flesh. He's God manifested in the flesh. See, that makes a huge difference. Not that your house is well built, but your house has to be founded upon a rock or you're building on sinking sand. So that's a huge difference to me and I think to everyone. Luke 9.62 is, is again makes a massive doctrinal difference. Luke 9 62, and I think you'll see what I'm talking about here. Jesus is calling people into service into the kingdom of God, and he's calling them in. Let's let's get saved here. But Jesus said unto him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And I'm going to tell you, that is what the King James reads. They, they have actually updated that from the, CS, from the NIV and the CSB. The NIV reads, is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So one is saved, and one is you're, just not, you're going to be saved, uh, but not do everything you need to do. One is, if you look back, you're like Lot's wife, you're not going to be saved. The other one is you're just not going to be fit for service. So the CSB actually got that. That's the reason I said we're just going to take a little journey together and that sometimes uh, some of the modern translations like the CSB will actually translate things very similarly to the King James. And that's one of the cases. So let's look at... Um, uh, Revelation 8.13. Let's see what the CSB has to say about Revelation Blessed is he that hears and keeps the writings of this book. The book of Revelation 8.13 of Revelation says this, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven. So let's see what it says in the CSB. Let's see if they kept this one as well. 8.13 in the CSB says this, I look and I heard an eagle flying high overhead. See, it's an it's a angel in the King James. It's an eagle. Those are materially different things. And obviously it's supposed to be an angel that you heard overhead. So you can see that even in minutia, that the CSB and the King James are going to be very different many times. And so things that are different are not the same, and it causes confusion in the body of Christ. Let's say somebody brings one translation to church and another translation is reading out of another, and you're just going to get different things and end up with a different Christianity. And I'm glad that not one jot, one tittle of the Bible is going to be lost, that, it's, uh, that Paul can make a doctrine on one letter as uh, others. And so... 
God's good. Let God be true, every man a liar. I believe God has preserved His Word in the King James Version. And you can see some of the changes. And Lord willing, we'll just keep going through some of these changes over the course of time. Talk with you later. God bless.